to do expansion phrase. into base phrase. Um, first of all, how did the pair of you get involved in this project? I was originally going to do something smaller with SDC when they did their um, live show continuum. Kind of dipped my feet in the water as a choreographer and also as a dancer and just like work with four dancers and make stuff outside um, right before the show. Um, but obviously when all of this happened, they're like, okay, well, we guess that's not happening. But then they're like, well, we have this idea. We'd love for you to be a part of it. And so they're just kind of asking me if I wanted to be a part of it. And I was like, well, obviously, yes, I want to, you know, dance and create and then they're kind of like trying to figure out like what dancer I should work with and I was like does it have to be a and b dancer and they're like no and I was like okay I know exactly who I want to work with it's Nia um she was also in my piece uh the how of it sped just like a small part of it um I was able to get her and uh, Emily from Spectrum in that which was like amazing so I was like okay definitely want to work with her I know I want to work with her and also her just being a black woman as well, like I would, I've been wanting to experiment and see like how the dynamic changes with having you know, a black female choreographer and a black dancer and also just like collaborating um, in a more intimate setting. Even though it is through Zoom, it's like, this is like felt like the most intimate type of collaboration I've had so far, which is awesome. Well, <laughs> probably since you're both in your houses. <laughs> <clears throat> I my my um volume was down, so I didn't hear you. Oh, properly. oh, that's okay. I was saying that that there were these ripples. Uh, there were these ripples that I don't know if I was really aware of, but they really go back to this sense of time that I was, you know, kind of um, alluding to this like this like pl playing for lack of better words with time and and um. <laughs> I think maybe I wasn't aware of the vibration of the the movement because maybe of the um, uh, continuous sound, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. It made it difficult to see if, if your movement was moving forward or moving yeah, yeah. side to side or, you know, like playing with time as this dimension as opposed to like this linear back in four yeah. to be honest like watching it without music kind of made me feel like there was all these different ideas trying to get out but yeah but that one would come and then it'd kind of be like oh no actually maybe it's this and then like i i, I didn't feel like just one idea that was coming yeah. out you know maybe in my head i mm. thought that i was talking about one thing but i think naturally when i'm like doing anything it can go like all over the place when Amanda approached you, what was your immediate thought about it? At the time that Amanda approached me, the company had just finished, maybe was coming to an end. We continued our season virtually, um, and we just, you know, inv were involved in process conceptual stuff um, through Zoom meetings. So that was an experience. And I think by the end of it, I was, you know, thinking, okay, well, I'll just take a break for a little bit and not really engage in any creative work for a while. And it's like, right when I thought that Amanda sends me, you know, a message and I, you know, I was thinking, well, usually if I'm engaging in something creative, uh, if I'm doing outside projects, it's, you know, because I'm being called by either uh, a close friend or because of an important kind of overarching theme or topic and being brought in to work on something. And those are probably the projects that I enjoy the most as opposed to trying to 
you know, present or produce something as a single individual. I, I, I enjoy collaborating in community mm. and I enjoy collaborating with like-minded artists. And I think especially now, uh, maybe the feeling I had was, and I don't want to do anymore in isolation. I'm already with my thoughts all day <laughs> and with myself. And, and when Amanda texts, I thought, you know what, this, this could be the container, the space to explore creative ideas with someone else, um, as opposed to feeling so alone. I miss smile. I miss people smiling. I miss touching people. I miss uh, the uh, compassion, I guess, you know, teaching and receiving from diverse group of people. That's where I'm comfortable. So was it, Amanda, like an open-ended invitation? You didn't have a set idea at the point. You just thought, I want to work with Nia because I like Yeah, I didn't really have like a, a set idea. I had things I was thinking about during this time, and I think that's kind of what we first approached it as, was like we brought things we were inspired by and just brainstormed and kind of got to know each other more, asked questions, and like saw recurring themes that both of us were feeling during this time and kind of went from there. You said, swing our mouth. And then you can let it kind of just like relax and then bring it up to your head. Kind of nuzzle your head. And then let your fingers drop on your face. And then you can slowly just bring it down your face. And then get to there. And then it's the reaching. Okay. go into your hip in the first session with the brainstorming the i've been i've been taking a college class um about spatial injustice and i think it applies to i mean us as dancers being in these small spaces i've been thinking about that just like how we're not able to move in big spaces and then also just with um ahmad arbery and um you know these individuals literally getting killed for doing normal everyday things you know in public space or in space. Mm -hmm. um, I have been thinking about that a lot heavily too, just because of the past two months has been highlighted um, more so being isolated. I think I've been thinking about it even more so than I usually do. Um, and I know Nia has been thinking about that too. I think it's just like something naturally being, you know, a person of color, you kind of tend to think about more because it, it affects us. Oh, that's what it was. I think you brought your hand to your mm -hmm. other foot as your foot moved. And then reach. And then you go through. So I wanted to bring those two ideas and kind of just like think of spatial injustice in that way. And I had like two things that I was like, I imagine like trees, like something to do with big trees and open space and then the sky and just kind of like being able to see like film um Mia just dancing in the sky and not having those borders not having that space to kind of confine her um so those are like really the only things that I had in my brain like when we were first um starting and I think it's like really grown into like all of these different layers and ideas and that's why we keep saying it's like she said from the beginning it's like this beautiful experiment I refuse to live in a way that is not true to who I feel I refuse to not believe in other people and not see their potential for good. I refuse to believe that there isn't hope for the future and that we can't make it past whatever rut that we're currently in and have been in for ever. Amanda came with this sort of, it's a big idea for a five minute dance. So. I mean, how does that work, that collaboration and, and taking something big and then sculpting it and, and refining it into um, something that we ultimately will see? Mm -hmm. I think it's been a, a series of back and forth. We usually start our sessions with some sort of process and reflection. Amanda, when we first started, had these questions that she wanted me to consider and words that she wanted me to respond to. And we ended up doing this back and forth that's been a consistent thing 
which led me to really think about this idea of creating a space for reflection. And I talked to Amanda about, you know, musings and that I had this running document on my Google Docs that was just musings right now <laughs> that are totally disconnected and, and still connected, I think, because they're from this, these circumstances and this time and they're coming from me. So we talked about musings and we talked about this form, uh, the, you know, working in a nonlinear form, more disjointed, but giving us a space to have these thoughts um, without kind of an aim or an end. In light of the, the times and in light of where we are, that maybe we can't approach the way that we're making art the way we normally would have. And how, do, how are we patient and kind enough with ourselves to allow for that, you know? That, that, that what our plans that we might have had may not be plans that we, we can have, that, that kind of um, way of producing. You know, it was really this thing we kept talking about, it, this experimentation and allowing for this experimentation. And at the time, Amanda had asked me about community and she asked me about my experience being a Black femme artist in the city. And while we're talking and we're able to converse about these things and dialogue and, and, and see similarities and laugh at each other, um, it occurred to me that although we're isolated, we're, we're not separate from our community and that there are ways that we can reach out to them. So we had this idea of, of tapping into our extended network of individuals to give them that space for music and reflections as well, to bring in their voices this kind of chorus of the voices around and and for Amanda in particular uh, making sure that we bring in voices of, of folks who are, are not often rep represented and whose opinions are maybe invisibilized. So are you talking and, about literal a literal chorus like we actually will hear voices? Yes possibly. <laughs> For me, um, moving to Seattle, it was kind of a big like culture shock a bit because I lived in DC and I was around a lot of girls that looked like me and I was so comfortable. And when I came here, it was really hard for me. I went to a school and a lot of people didn't like me or they had different ideas of me because I was black. And I was really, I never understood how that could have impacted me in DC. I had so many girls that looked like me and that wasn't a concern. And like I knew it was an issue, but when I was moving out here, it was more present and I was dealing with it face on and it was a lot harder. And I think I've been rebelling against the idea that black girls don't do ballet. Black girls aren't, especially in schools, like they'll say like ignorant comments like, oh, you speak well or things like that. And I think that we need to encourage black boys and black girls and brown children in general to stand up for what they believe in and empower others. Uh, my elders empower me. Uh, my mentors empower me. Um, I empower myself. Um, I love seeing that I'm not the only one. Like when you see another black person, when you see another trans person, when you see another person who's just weird and you can just tell or like, you know, when someone wears like a little charm that only you know about, and you're like, oh my God, there, there's something about seeing likeness that empowers me so much. Dance is my favorite art form and um, dance on film isn't necessarily my favorite art form. So we're in this time where it, dance artists of all kinds are trying to reimagine uh, space and time and access. You and I talked about access. So Nia and, and, and a boundless space is, is like a total juxtaposition of where all of us are, which is confined. It's an interesting irony. I mean, what, how are you thinking about this? I think like I was like in the sense of dance, I was thinking like when Mia would be in that space, just, you know, expanding in that and like not having these limitations. Like I was just thinking from a like film perspective too, like how like great that would look, how it forces the audience to really look at the person. You're not really focusing on anything else because the back of that is really like this blank canvas for you to kind of carve space in. Um, and then on top of that, her being a black woman and like having the audience like specifically view a black woman doing that, taking up the space, like just kind of saying this, like, look at me. 
without necessarily demanding it, but just being in that space, I think is like, no matter what, gonna be a powerful thing. Amanda was also interested in kind of like directing the attention of the potential audience in kind of specific ways. So she was interested in using sound to direct attention and kind of create these moments of shrinking. So these moments of being really close and tight into kind of parts or spaces that are very intimate. And then also breaking out to these kind of bigger um, ideas around space in, in, in the world around us. Um, and, you know, we were talking about at this point, it's so rare to move around Seattle, either in your car or walking around and not see humans so much. How do we capture these streets, these places that were very populated, very, you know, kind of in the hustle and bustle of productivity um, that are now, uh, there's, a, there's an absence of something. And also there's so much there and maybe revealed that we couldn't see because of the hustle and bustle. So, you know, we're hopefully Henry's excited about that, but we want to kind of get out into Seattle, into these spaces that Amanda was talking about, either around or around familiar areas and just kind of what what is there now? What's new and and what what can we see in these spaces now that there is this uh opportunity for us to access them sensorially or or even just with our physical being and days, you know? Yeah. I mean, I often find myself walking around now, taking small walks and looking and stopping, considering something that I had maybe not considered before. All the artists that I've talked to since, since this all started have been uh, either, they sort of alternate, like, I have no job, I have you know, I'm freaking out because I can't pay my rent. And then having these big um, boundless ideas, like this creativity. Amanda, just last week when we talked, talked about opportunity, talked about a chance to make something new, a chance to shift the paradigm, if only a little bit. Even if it reaches like one or two people for me, I feel like I'm doing what I want to do. Because it's not necessarily about like, I think some artists really care about like, oh, well, I want to be viral. I want this to be seen by everyone. And it's like, for me, I think with these ideas, especially it's like even just getting one or two people or a few people to like understand these ideas and kind of understand different types of people more, like then perhaps they will be able to spread that on to other people and they'll spread that way, which does take a, a slow amount of time. But like me just making a, a piece that's pretty like, I know I have done in the past where I just do something, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something by the water and it's going to be beautiful. And like, that's still beautiful and it touches people in a different way, but I'm not necessarily saying what I want to say. Um, and that was like one of the questions I really asked Nia. I was like, you know, like, what do you want to say during this time? Like either to the dance world, either to society, whatever that is. So I had this whole thing where we live, learn, work and play matters. And unlike some people who have big yards, swimming pools, they live out in the suburbs. They got enough space and room. They're okay. <laughs> oh, we all in this together. <laughs> so, that's what I'm saying. So when I wrote this, it was, it was dealing with that social justice and, and social uh, uh, injustice, the spatial injustice, you know. I can't walk to a clinic. You can't always have everything there. And that causes a lot of, of health dis disparities, you know. It really does. Think about that a lot. As a community, there's an expectation that we who aren't artists are placing on artists that you're going to create all this wonderful stuff to get us through this insane time that we're, we're living through. So, Nia, it sounds like consciously yeah. saying, wait, I don't have to, that's on, that's on <laughs> you, that's not on me. Yeah? That's not on me. I don't even know if Amanda and I have the capacity emotionally and psychologically right now <laughs> to create in that way. You know what I mean? We're trying to tap into that which ins inspires us and that which kind of holds us up right now. Um, as well as asking ourselves difficult questions. You know, it's a balance. When we're creating, we're tr tr really trying to do, uh, or there's a pressure to do something new, imaginative or, um, you know, 
you know, there's that pressure that comes with making art that I think is not appropriate for right now at all. <laughs> that, that there's this kind of need to kind of take care of what's, of what's in front of us and, and kind of maintain what's in front of us. Um, and so, you know, like Amanda and I are, are, are really giving us our, ourselves the freedom to, like she said, work with what, what we have and also work with them what we don't have. And, and that that is not a source of anxiety, but that's a, a way of asking ourselves, what, what, what else is there that we do have? Awesome. That looks so cool. cool. That looks so good. I'd love to do one more of those wide ones. <laughs> I don't know if you have a timeline, Amanda. Did Noe and James say this is it? The day, the day that we're doing this. I know that we're finishing filming June seventh. We kind of have a timeline of what of fitting yeah. in there, and I think we'll definitely be able to do it, especially because we have like a lot of different ideas and movement so like growing up in PMB and in a ballet company where you're always just like yeah. this is the beginning this is the end you just do it like that and you just I that's how I've always been like a little OCD in that way so at first I was like daunted I was like okay so we're gonna just make movement and like I'm gonna just allow it to be there and not put it anywhere but now I feel very like I, I think I it's made this process a lot better knowing that because I know that we have all of this material, we have all of these things we've been exploring. So when it does come to filming, there's just all of these things to do. And then once we have all that material, it's really up to us and Henry to kind of position it. And I think that's gonna be really exciting, honestly, that part too. You said something, Amanda, earlier about, you know, you're not making this with the intent of it going viral, but you do want audiences to take something from this. And I'm wondering if each of you can speak to what what you most hope that we get when we when we watch this? I really didn't know what I wanted in the very beginning to, for what I wanted the audience to feel, but I think most importantly, I just like want them to really think, um, like just think during this time and be present. And like when they hopefully watch the film, like we're trying to play around with like people actually being visible and not being visible and voices like being heard and not being heard. and playing around with those juxtapositions. So I hope that it can apply to like not just us as individuals or the people we're talking to or dancers, but just like every type of thing. Cause it applies to, you know, even the coronavirus, you know, pandemic and how we don't see what's going on, but we're hearing about it. And so a lot of people are not always taking it seriously um, and are not always, you know, they're being a little selfish in their action. Thinking a lot about like, the dangers of operating individualistically and how how it's playing out in this country with COVID especially because we're so selfish and one-minded how COVID is turning out is really really bad and worse than it could have been. I really just want people to think and I also think I want people to see that dance doesn't have to be just a certain way and dance on film doesn't have to just be a certain way too because I think there's a lot of repeating of like different types of things of how dance is used on film. And that's partially just because of what does well and what doesn't, I think also. Um, so I think it'll be, I would be excited for people to see dance in a different way on film and maybe not like what me and I or have been like exploring is really like seeing someone dance, but not seeing their whole body or just seeing, you know, their torso and then their hips or like just a hand. like you know, really directing their eye to certain things and seeing what they can take from that and what that makes them feel. My hope is from this, and I haven't even told Amanda this, my hope is that there are things in this piece that really reach out specific individuals for very different reasons. And that there isn't the, the, a one thing that I can say like, this is gonna be the thing they're gonna go take away with, but that it, it provides these things for you to latch onto either because you experienced that or you remember that, or you, you were there, mm -hmm. you, you know, whether you, you know, riding your bike down the street or you moved your body in that way, or you remember some intimate connection to what's going on. And that, that's more exciting to me right now than kind of, um, dictating or, or even like strongly suggesting that, you know, 
you feel a certain way about this? I refuse to be ignored, pushed away, not seen, or not heard. 